Hi there, welcome to my video recounting my bikepacking trip along the Arizona Trail. For those of you who don't know, the Arizona Trail stretches from the border between Mexico and Arizona all the way up to the Utah-Arizona border. If you do the full trip, you'll actually cross the Grand Canyon. You have to disassemble your bike uh, when you do that and then ride the last couple of miles up to the Utah border. I didn't quite have the time for that, so my goal was to ride from the border all the way up to the Grand Canyon and actually did that as a fundraiser for the Zambia Carnivore Program. Regardless, it's about 730 miles over 60,000 feet of uphill and a lot of ups and downs as you make your way north. At the Mexico border, ready to start the adventure. No wall here, but right at the border. Grand Canyon, here we come. Right from the start, you end up crossing some pretty remote terrain. Beautiful single track in this area though, and very varied terrain. It's not quite desert yet, more chaparral. Reminded me a lot of Southern California, where I actually learned to mountain bike myself. Of course, the first of many a gate that you find on this trail as I made my way to Patagonia for a nice breakfast before taking on the next part of the ride. Then it got really hot. Uh, I think my uh, thermometer maxed out at 99 degrees and it was somewhere north of that. I was actually fortunate to spot some real javelinas before I got to one of the first sort of water supply points. I had enough with me to not having to refill, but this is sort of typical of what you find in Arizona. Quite often actually put out there for cattle and the likes and not always the nicest water, but if you need water to survive. After some ups and downs in the heat, I made my way to Kentucky Camp, which is an old gold mining camp turned museum now and actually quite fascinating uh, learning about the history of this area. It was abandoned about a hundred years ago, but some of the buildings have been repurposed as cabins. And these lovely ladies here are what we call trail angels. They support hikers and bikepackers on the Arizona Trail and cooked up a couple of burgers when I was there. So it was quite a pleasant surprise to run into them and thank you so much for your support. Carrying on from Kentucky Camp was beautiful riding in the last couple of uh, daylight hours. Yeah, the desert just turns so beautiful when the sun is, you know, at an angle. And uh, that night I had a gorgeous campsite out in the middle of nowhere. I think there were only cows in the distance that I saw the next morning. And it was in a good position to carry on from. Yeehaw! Arguably the biggest challenge on the Arizona Trail, apart from heat, is water and very limited water sources. This is actually one that uh, is not the worst I've seen, but as you can see, it's not the best either. But at least there's some clear water if you kind of, you know, play a little bit around the gunk. As you make your way north towards Tucson, you actually start seeing the first Ocotillas and eventually start seeing some saguaro cactuses as well. This is more the desert that I was envisioning riding uh, in this part of Arizona and it's absolutely beautiful, gorgeous single track, but also rough and still very hot at this stage. I stopped at Colossal Cave to refill my water and then as you make your way down towards Tucson it's arguably some of the best single track of the whole uh, Arizona Trail. I mean just smooth you know going you know left to right zigzagging it's like snowboarding in pure powder. It was such a, a blast and I can't wait to go back and do this again. Eating ice at the roadside market. Today was another scorcher. We're getting to Tucson. 
As it got dark soon after, I cowboy camped on the outskirts of Tucson and then the next day started the long climb up Reddington Pass. Beautiful scenery and lovely to do that in the morning when it's still a little bit cooler before the heat of the day sets in. Okay, this area is called the lake. Let's go see the lake. Well, I guess that counts as a lake in Arizona. And it's still early in the season. Wow. The not so fun part of biking, wrestling your bike with all the water weight up these staircases, totally unrideable. Basically a hiking trail they let you take a bike on. It's only about 90 degrees, so it's not as hot as other days. But man, getting up to Mount Lemon or Somerville does take you uphill quite a bit. Something like 8,600 feet uh, over a course of 50 miles. Nice one. After the brutal climb up Mount Lemon and then the last bit of technical single track, it was just nice to get up to Summer Haven, get some supplies and find a gorgeous campsite down by the river. You know, the first free flowing water in a long time. Yep, much, much cooler up here in Mount Lemon area. You know, it quickly dips into the 50s uh, towards sunset or just after sunset. Uh, you know, after the 90s on the plane, it's actually quite nice. Uh, but it could be a chilly night actually stopped at a little store, got some tomatoes and a head of lettuce, just jonesing for some greenery, uh, a couple of mozzies here too, uh, jonesing for some greenery after, you know, eating all the other, you know, trail food, but uh, at least made it to one of the high points and uh, we'll see, today was tough, I mean, part of it was really tough and I was like, you know, kind of hitting a wall after yesterday's big day and you know 8,600 feet of uphill over 50 miles today but yeah made it up here and uh, looking forward to the rest next morning started off along the infamous Oracle Ridge many people consider this the most technical part of the whole trip and there's quite a bit of exposure and this only recently reopened after the fires so it is very loose and uh, a lot of scree actually came off the bike there at least once or twice uh, put a foot down or two um, yeah i mean the bike just handles differently with the heavy water bottles on the front fork and you know if you lose a little bit of uh, firm ground you know it can very easily wash out but beautiful views all around uh, the Despite all the damage from the fires, it is still a gorgeous area and well worth the effort to go and cycle up there. Once you get down from the ridge though, you start hitting the area around Oracle State Park and now you're back to glorious single track. Mostly slightly downhill, so nice and fast and fun and an area that will stay with you for a long time. Also, the first time I actually got to one of these little bridges that they've put up so you don't have to go through the endless rigmarole of opening gates, which is a defining feature of the Arizona Trail as it is. Beautiful barrel cactuses along the way, but in this case, on a tight corner, I lost the front wheel and I buried my leg into one of those. Arizona acupuncture, as they call it. Day five and taking a break in a culvert under a highway. It's actually the coolest place out here in the desert. It was 35 degrees this morning when I woke up in outside of Summer Haven, close to the top of Mount Lemon. And down here in the desert, Oracle State Park area, it's about 95 degrees, so 60 degrees swing. Been a, an interesting ride down Oracle Ridge. Uh, it's kind of very loose and rocky after the recent fires it just opened up now so it's pretty technical pretty brutal actually did come off the bike once or twice uh just you know when stuff gives way under you 
and managed to kiss a cactus as well. So, you know, pulled out all the thorns out of my leg. <laughs> so not, nothing too serious. And thankfully someone left water. I mean, some trail volunteers left water in this area. So, uh, because I also busted up my 40 ounce spare water that uh, bolts to the bottom of the frame of the bike, the Nalgene just cracked and uh, it's useless now. But yeah, despite little things like that, everything good and looking forward to after a quick break, you know, try to hoof out another 20 or 30 miles, getting closer to Superior, which to me is sort of my end of the, the second section uh, before starting to head up to Flagstaff. We'll see lots of desert to cross in between still and pretty limited water. There is so much beauty in the desert, but also constant hazards for mountain bike tires. Although the riding, once you left Oracle State Park and work your way north, is really nice, kind of up and down, undulating, but great single track all the way. And in this case, I was riding towards sunset and the light just kept getting better and better and it started getting more and more beautiful until I, you know, just kept on pounding on the miles and uh, going as far as I can for the day despite the inevitable gate here and there like the little Arizona trail gates though they actually quite neat and uh, yeah I mean once it got to a little bit later here I had water from that resupply uh, the, the water box uh, before that culvert and I found this campsite with these amazing 360 degree views and once I saw it I was like I'm not going any further today. This is where I have to stay. And off the whole trip, this was definitely one of the most beautiful places. At night, the stars were amazing as well. I literally couldn't see anything man-made from here. I was one little light maybe in the distance that could have been something else as well. But a gorgeous, gorgeous area and a very memorable campsite. The next morning was all about getting to water since I didn't sleep by water. And fortunately, after a nice little downhill, there was a reliable cattle tank in that area. That's a little off trail, but I managed to find it and it worked out well. There's not a more beautiful sound anywhere in the desert than water dripping into a tank. Good, clean, drinkable water. It's pretty rare out here. Of course, always beware of hitchhikers. From here you cross some flat terrain and then it's a little bit up and down, but slowly the trail starts making its way down towards the Hela River system. it wouldn't be Arizona without running into a rattler. They're actually harmless and really try to just warn you off and stay out of your way so quite easy to avoid. Early in the morning as in the sun Excellent single track and beautiful scenery as you make your way down following the Gila River. Eventually you get to the low point of the Arizona Trail before taking a hard right and starting to climb up into the mountains. It's always good to pause and just appreciate nature a little bit as well. All these buzzards were kind of circling around and then eventually followed me up the canyon as I made my way up the mountains. Maybe I looked like I was not going to make it.
Once you leave the Gila River behind and start making your way up Alamo Canyon, the scenery that unfolds around every turn just keeps getting better and better. Very high density of saguaros in this area, probably the highest I've seen anywhere in Arizona. And it's a long climb, but you can actually ride most of it. Slow uphill slog. up a long way trying to get over the mountains from Gila River towards Superior. Gorgeous country to ride in though. Once you crest the summit it's mostly downhill towards the picket post trailhead which is the classic finish of the AZT 300. Uh, which is what I would highly recommend for anyone if you have a week to do a bikepacking trip that is unlike anything else you will do in North America. It is definitely something special to consider. An update on Justin's uh, hazelnut and almond butter. They work a bit better in the desert than on the Colorado Trail because it's so hot so they stay a little softer. But even if you knead and squeeze them, you only get so much of it out of it. So in the end, you still have to go and cut open the package to get to, you know, a good portion of the nutrition in there because there's still a lot left in there and you don't want to miss out on that. So still waiting for them to redesign their packaging to actually make all the stuff accessible so that you don't have to go and dig out a knife and cut open the package every time you want to get to all the deliciousness in there. Great product though and the packaging is pretty solid as in withstanding any bumps along the road. I've never had one leak or break on me. Um, yeah, we just love to be able to get it out more easily. Come on guys, you can do better. Superior is only five or six miles off the main trail and this is where I resupplied. I had a box shipped to the post office. Actually tried desperately the night before to make it before the post office closed but then had my timing wrong and they were closed by the time I got there. But spend the night in a motel, nothing special to write home about, not a lot of options here but perfectly fine. Had a great uh, meal at a barbecue restaurant and then headed into Phoenix the next day for a quick repair on my bike. I often get asked if I'm not scared camping out in the wilderness on a trip like this and I will say the scariest moments of this whole trip was urban traffic uh, going into Phoenix to a bike shop for a quick repair. I tell you you're way safer out there in the middle of the wilderness and once I had the bike fixed up, I couldn't wait to get out of town and start heading north and back into the wilderness areas. After cowboy camping just past Saguaro Lake, made my way through an OHV area the next day. Uh, quite a rough and tumble out there. I guess this gentleman was uh, let down by the government or maybe the education system. But uh, soon after you start this endless pass that takes you all the way up to the high mountains again. And then when you get to the top, there's this nice ridge line road. After that long, long slog up the hill, it's actually fun to go downhill a little bit. Uh, part of it was burned, so it's kind of interesting to see the contrast between that and then the areas uh, further on that didn't burn. And you can see the destructive damage that fire can, you know, wreak in these mountains. Always lovely to see hikers along the way. These ladies were actually from Colorado. And then towards the end of the day, dropping down from the ridge to Sycamore Creek for a lovely campsite. The next morning started off pleasantly, but pretty soon you turn up a forest road and then it's an endless climb with numerous false summits as you work your way up towards the Mazatzal Mountains and the wilderness area. 
it was pretty brutal towards the top and I was so happy to find that the downhill back all the way down the mountain is actually on what turned out in the end to be the nicest single track of this midsection of the trail. It's called the Gold Ridge Trail. After a night in Payson and doing some laundry and then a half day ride up to Pine, got to my favorite restaurant of the whole trip, That Brewery. They make the most excellent brisket and I liked it so much I actually ordered some to take with me for dinner and to enjoy while I'm having these beautiful views out on the trail. Strange little mishap for me here was losing one of my sandals and having to backtrack about three miles or so six miles round trip to go and retrieve it. I've given up on it already but a couple came by and mentioned that they saw it on the trail and as it was my only backup shoes compared to my bike shoes I had to do it. Underneath the Mogollon Rim the Arizona Trail actually overlaps with the Highline Trail and it's pretty brutal and mostly hiker bike. Uh, once you get to the bottom of where the trail turns up to cross over to the top of the rim it's lovely to get to this little stream though and then you have this the steep steep climb up to the top end of the rim and the environment changes completely. Oh some snow! Yeehaw! Desert is snow. Suddenly the heat in the desert seems like a long distant memory as you work your way along this flat, slightly downhill sloping plain towards Flagstaff. I've never spent, you know, 50-60 miles on endless single track just meditatively riding through the trees. Uh, the scenery is not fantastic because you're mostly enveloped in trees and this area can get muddy thankfully it wasn't when i was there but spending days among the trees and uh, is lovely and then suddenly it's a little bit cooler when you camp here part of the trail here actually follows the grades of an old historic railroad that was built in the 1920s by lumber companies and was abandoned in the 30s i believe uh, so, just nice to see the historical background of this whole area. Some of the first views in days in the Lake Mary area, and then the first views of Flagstaff Mountain, which to me indicates the end point of the mid part of the trail from Superior to Flagstaff. And after that, it's up and over the high point of the trail, and then working your way down towards the Grand Canyon. But first, a stop at Whole Foods to resupply and just sit outside and fill myself up with nutritious food. I've been carrying my uh, rain sheet along all along. And during you know, the first almost two weeks of the trip, I thought, well, that was just extra weight. Uh, but after it was 31 yesterday morning and I slept a bit cold, I decided to put the rain sheet on to just keep more heat in the tent and a good thing I did it because just as I stopped last night put up the tent it started raining I actually had to scramble to get everything inside and uh, it rained for about an hour and also another shower or two later so we'll see what the trails are like I mean it looks like it gets pretty muddy in this area if it gets wet so Hopefully uh, it's rained more here and less in other places so the trails are not that wet. Uh, it could be slippery going uphill and over the mountain today. But the last big mountain of the trip left, uh, San Francisco I believe, sand something peaks here uh, up to the snow ski area in Flagstaff. 
and then dropping down the other side and then the last uh, less than 100 miles to the Grand Canyon. So hopefully all goes well. <sighs> it's just chilly and wet. Don't like wet. Well, after wiping the ice off the saddle and setting off in cold temperatures, you quickly heat up from the uphill as you work your way up and around the mountain, kind of towards the Arizona Snowball Ski Resort area and passing on the side of the San Francisco peaks. Some light snow from last night's rainstorm up higher and uh, then it's not too long before you start hitting some real snow patches as well. Feels like Colorado now. Pretty soon the trail turns downhill though for probably my second favorite piece of downhill single track on the entire Arizona Trail. Just endless swooping loops through the trees and um, you know alternating between pines and aspens. It's always weird for me to see aspens in Arizona because it's so uh, familiar to me in Colorado and I don't associate it with Arizona. But yes, some really, really sweet riding in this area. Final water stop at the renowned Babbitt Ranch. Beheading of the new single track that volunteers built on the flat sections leading up towards the Grand Canyon. My final campsite out in the middle of nowhere. And then the next morning you actually cross through an area with a whole lot of wild horses, which was quite interesting to see. And then get to Grandview Tower that uh, overlooks part of the Grand Canyon, your first glimpse of the Grand Canyon if you climb up there. And suddenly it's all over. At the start of the South Kaibab Trail and the official end of the ride for me. Whew, it's over.